we do start with breaking news. The man suspected of abducting an elderly woman in Putnam County has now been identified. He's still on the run, though. Sophie Nielsen Coldings in Cookville, where the search continues this morning. And Sophie, we hear that you're just getting some new details on the suspect. Police just released his name and some identifying information about him. He is 34 year old uh, Vaughn Russell Lee Vaughn. He is described as being six foot tall, 200 pounds, short brown hair, receding hairline and multiple tattoos. So that should help people identify him if they do happen to see him this morning. If you do, police are warning, do not go up to this man. He is considered armed and dangerous. Instead, police want people to call 911 immediately. There has been a manhunt going on for this person all night long here in Cookville. We have been standing on South Willow Avenue, the area where police say he ran from his car after abducting an elderly woman. Now, police say that woman was found safe and that she's relatively unharmed. But this manhunt has continued in this neighborhood behind me. We've seen police vehicles come in and out of this road all morning long. For now, Sophie Nelson Colding live in Cookville uh, News Channel 5. All right, sounds good. Sophie, thanks for the update on that. We do have more breaking news now. Metro officers catch a burglar red-handed at a Metro PCS uh, store in Madison. That's where they sell those phones. News Channel 5's Alexandra Cohen has been working this story for us. Apparently what happened was this guy breaks into the Metro PCS store in the Madison neighborhood and then he is caught red-handed, so to speak. He's actually passed out. They believe he was intoxicated, but he had a bag loaded with Metro PCS phones in his hands. They went ahead and carted him off to the hospital right there. Been identified as Michael Torres, and we're told that warrants were out for his arrest. Police do have him in custody right now. He'll be taken from the hospital to jail and then charged in that crime. We'll get more from Alexandra Cohen on this story a little bit later. Amy? Thanks so much. And also breaking this morning, two shootings in the same neighborhood sends multiple people to the hospital. News Channel 5, Dan Kennedy, live from Vanderbilt University Medical Center, where the latest victim is being treated. Dan, uh, how are the victims doing? Amy, all the victims are remarkably expected to recover. This latest victim, this 17-year-old, was shot multiple times. And like you said, it all happened within about a six hour period. It all happened in the same small neighborhood, kind of between the White's Creek area and Madison. This is the video from just after midnight when we got on the scene. This 17 year old called police and said he was shot. Police indeed arrived on the scene and saw that he had multiple gunshot wounds to his leg. He said he was just standing on the street corner, minding his own business, waiting for a ride just after midnight when somebody came by and fired shots at him. Again, he's expected to be okay. Just hours before that, around dinner time in that same neighborhood police also got called out to a shooting they thought it was only one person shot but then when they got there they realized it was not just one they had two shooting victims to worry about both of them were taken to the hospital as officers investigated a car that was riddled with bullet holes and several shell casings on the ground too now, i've been talking with investigators overnight they do not believe that these two incidents are connected and they have not yet made any arrests in fact that 17 year old tells police he didn't see who shot him. So now they're asking for anybody in the public who might know what happened to give them a call. Reporting live from Vanderbilt, Dan Kennedy, News Channel 5. All right, Dan, thanks so much. A crash that killed two people is under investigation in Rock Island. The Southern Standard reports that the car pulled in front of a cattle truck at the intersection of Sparta Highway and Old Rock Island Road yesterday. There's a dollar store at that intersection. It might help ring a bell. Two people were killed. Their names have not been released. Metro detectives looking for the man who held up a couple of businesses in less than 24 hours. Police say the suspect was a customer at Drifter's Barbecue for about an hour before he went outside to smoke. He came back in and pulled a gun, robbed the place. Investigators think the same guy then robbed a shell station. Anyone with information should contact Crime Stopper 615-74-CRIME. New video this morning coming out of Franklin of that violent hotel robbery we had as breaking news yesterday morning. This surveillance video showing the two men in hoodies walking into the Baymont Inn around 1 o'clock armed with a knife and a gun. They approached the clerk right there on the left of the screen demanding money and then took off with an undisclosed amount of cash. Those thieves then left in a burgundy or maybe kind of a burnt orange Ford Expedition. There's a blonde woman 
inside that SUV. One of the robbers was wearing an old Ensworth High School sweatshirt, the one on the right there, that gray hoodie. The other guy photographed at one point without his face covered. That's the picture on the left there. Franklin police are offering a $5,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. Amy? A pilot is recovering this morning after crashing his plane in Smith County. Colin McDonald was trying to make an emergency landing when the plane went down off McCall Street yesterday afternoon. The 23-year-old was rushed to Vanderbilt Medical Center. We're told yesterday's strong winds likely played a role in the crash and the FAA is investigating. Some breaking news nationally this morning. The Senate took the first major step toward repealing the Affordable Care Act. Lawmakers voting 51 to 48 on a non-binding Republican-backed measure that would ease the way for more action to repeal that legislation next month. But remember I said non-binding. Some Republicans are concerned about setting a repeal in place without having any kind of replacement plan. Democratic Senator Bernie Sanders urging his colleagues to vote no on the amendment, claiming it would not actually strengthen Social Security. The House is expected to vote as early as tomorrow. Well, the gas pipeline that delivers fuel to the mid-state is currently shut down because of a leak and the rain is delaying getting it fixed. The Colonial Pipeline Company shut down that line delivering gasoline between Nashville and Atlanta over the weekend to find and then fix that leak. But don't worry, officials say there will not be a shortage because the supplies are already at near capacity. Colonial is hoping to have that pipeline back online, though, by the end of the week.